Working with a template in Wix Studio is a lot like starting with a UI kit. It's more of a starting point rather than a rigid template where you update the content. Because of that, it's a great way to start any project. Here we'll walk through how to find a good template, how to customize it to make it unique, and then working with the business tools for the rest of the website build. So let's go. In your Wix Studio dashboard, head to resources. There are two types of templates, Wix Studio templates, which were made by the Wix Studio team. And then there's the template marketplace. These are made by designers and web builders. And at the time of this recording, it's only just recently launched. So there's bound to be more and more options to choose from. For now, select Wix Studio templates. Here, there are a lot of templates made by the Wix Studio team. You can filter to find the right vibe, even by feature to accommodate e-commerce, bookings, and more. You can press the view button to preview, and a lot of these come with interactive animations already built out. Now on the template marketplace side, it's similar to the made by Wix Studio templates, but remember that all these templates are just a starting point. Everything is available to change with the drag and drop builder. So when browsing, focus less on the visual design and more on the layouts. Focus on business solutions like e-com, CMS, or bookings over a nice homepage. All that said, I think I like this option. So we'll press edit and now we're in the Wix Studio editor. So first we need to update the branding. So let's head over to site styles and let's start with typography. Maybe we'll swap out this Questrel for railway. You see that as I'm updating this, it is automatically updating everything across our entire designs. I'm gonna swap over for all of the headers here. And then for these paragraphs, maybe we size them up a little bit. I think they're a little bit too small. So maybe we'll take the 18 to 20. We'll take the 16 up to 18. And we'll change the 14 to 16. You see that updated the blog, also updated these paragraphs here as well. Okay, so we've got our typography ready. Now let's change up our colors. So I'm gonna swap this green out and maybe we'll change it to a tealish color. Looks great. We just need to make sure that we update all of these greens to make sure that we get full coverage across our entire designs. I don't see anything on the home page with that, but it's probably a good idea to be safer than sorry. And you know what? This looks a little bit more of a green dark, so we'll swap that out as well. Okay, it looks like it's that. You can always check for what colors they are based on clicking on this background color and then selecting right here. Right now it's grabbing this, so we can just press edit right here and I'll swap that one for a blue green instead of a yellowish green. Hit apply. Great. Now, one of the important things to wrap your head around is working with assets. Let's say we want to reuse this section. We could save it as an asset by right clicking, then press save as asset. And now when you press the plus button, you can hit the assets and you'll find it right there. But everything is still super editable. So we'll swap out this image for another, update the text to be more relevant, and now we need to scale the size of the content a little bit. Okay, perfect. So this template comes with a blog and a client would be able to make posts from the dashboard. We could then add a blog post feed to the homepage, but maybe I want this to be a little more custom. We could instead create a custom CMS that has a title, cover image, and long text. Now to create a custom feed, I'm going to copy this section and paste it. So now we've got two sections and first I'll make sure to drop this little cell so that there's no transition anymore because we're kind of getting into the content of the page. And here I'll delete these text blocks because we're going to put our feed inside of here. And then right here, we're going to change this button and rename it into view all blog posts. We'll put it over here, align it to the left, and right here is where we're going to put our feed. Oh, let's change this to our recent blog posts. Perfect. 
So now we're just gonna press this plus button, go ahead and add in a repeater. I'll scale this out to the edge and inside we are going to add some content in here. But instead of building something from scratch, let's go ahead and copy something from another section. I really like the layout of this, so I'll just double click into this content section and I'm gonna copy. I'll head back up to our repeater and inside of one of the repeater instances, I'll paste. Great, we've got our content inside and now I'll just make sure that we will copy the style of the container. Looks like the color is correct, but the corners have 40 pixels of border radius. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that now. And so you can see, as I update this block right here, it's updating all of the instances inside of that repeater. And that's a good thing, but we want to update this content dynamically. But before we do that, let's change this image out for a cover image. Because inside of our posts, we've got these cover images that look really great. So I'll just press this plus button, drag in a image, and we're going to attach it right above the title. I'm gonna scale this down a bit, resize it till it kind of fits inside of this box. This feels pretty good, maybe a little bit taller. But you know what, this card needs to be taller as well. So we'll just drag that out and I'll make sure that this is centered so it's not scaling improperly. Okay, that's looking pretty good, but we definitely want to add a little corner radius here. Maybe we put it at 18 pixels. Okay, we also need to bump this out a little bit so that we've got some more room. And that's looking really great. The only thing left to do is connect this to our designs. Click until you see this little icon. We're currently selected the repeater, and when we click on this, we're going to connect it to our CMS. We have to begin by adding a data set. So even though we've got our CMS already, which is news, we still need to create a new data set and call it log feed. This is connecting directly to the news that we have already set up for our CMS. But now we're able to, on this right bar, select the fields and connect them directly to the content inside. So I can click here and I can make this connected to the date that it was posted, the name of the person, long description, short description. We'll go ahead and change this to title. And for this, we probably don't want to do a long description because we don't have the room. So we'll make it short description. Perfect. Okay, this looks really great, but you know what? It's filling up too much space, especially since we have a view all button. Maybe we only show the most recent three posts. To do that, just grab the repeater again and go to data set settings. Right here, our maximum is currently by default 12. So we're gonna swap that to three. When you press enter, it's gonna automatically filter out to just the most recent three posts. And now we're ready to go. Looks pretty good. Now we've taken the existing designs and used it in a completely new way. This is the beauty of templates in Wix Studio. Everything is super dynamic and really should be looked at as a starting point. So now that we no longer have a blank page, why don't you take it from here? And if you want more design tactics like these, be sure to check out the Wix Studio Academy.